what is going on you guys my name is rage and i am back today with another video guide and playthrough for you in today's video i want to show you guys my next playthrough in doom part 2 for nodes 2-2 uh, same thing you guys as the last uh, video we are going to use a, a, a construction of the aim team but however i did find it, this one was quite tricky to use a full aim roster so i am going to infuse a little bit of uh, a little bit of um of different dynamics here so starting off here you guys let's walk you through my aim roster as well as the full characters i'm going to use first and foremost i cannot stress this enough you're definitely going to need a strong scientist supreme if you want to get through this with a lower team power just because scientist supreme um her ability her ultimate to be able to cast those negative debuffs on our enemies in addition to giving us the advantage for the potential chance to revive as you can see here my scientist supreme is 50k with the four red i also do have the level one iso 8 uh healers just to provide sustainability and healing in addition you guys um if you can keep for her ultimate this is really going to be what's key here because as you can see here um with her ultimate here actually t4 yeah actually she gains an extra 50 percent focus per aim ally for this attack so really even if we're up against foes that are of higher power than our team she's gonna be able to still apply her ultimate on them so as you can see here she's tier 12 and that's the only t4 i do have next we are bringing on board aim assaulter with almost 32k here i got him at the four red star also the level the level one healer iso aid just to provide additional healing sustain uh, as you can see here i didn't max his abilities out no t4s however with the tier 10 gear he's really just gonna be providing speed to our team in addition to uh, uh supporting scientist supreme in terms of being able to uh make sure she stays alive as well uh, next to provide um, some support in addition to stuns we're going to have graviton here at almost 28k with the three red additionally the level one iso 8 healer just to provide sustainability as you can see here i only do have graviton at tier 10 here that's all i really need him for um and additionally as you can see here i do have his abilities here of no t4 so yeah you, know, you just want to bring on graviton just to be able to provide that stun and the slow especially for multiple targets uh, last but not least, you guys, we we need someone that can soak up damage for our team while we're providing, you know, the healing and sustain. It's going to be aim security here at almost 27k with the three red. Additionally, again, the sustain's really big, so that's why I also have the level one iso eight healer on her as well. Additionally, as you can see here, tier 10, which is consistent with all the other characters. Um, I did try this with my usual fifth character, Monstrosity. However, uh, with this node, it's actually quite tricky with Emma Frost being in the mix. So that's why, in particular, we are actually going to bring on an additional sustainability and healing for our roster. And that's going to be the one, the only Shuri here. I do have her at tier 13, um, building her towards potentially Dark Dimension 3. So that's why I have her this powerful. I have her at 52k here with the four red. I have no T4s on her abilities. In addition, I do have the level two ISO 8 healer on her just to give her that extra 10% boost in health. Uh, do keep in mind, you guys, you're gonna see that when I play this node and show you how my guide is, uh, we don't need a Shuri this powerful. She's really there just because she needs to provide additional defense up and healing. So you can actually probably do this node with a lower Shuri. Unfortunately, in this case, um, mine was already powerful. So I need to utilize her to get through the nodes. Um, and so potentially if you guys have a Shuri around 40k, I definitely think it's still possible. It's just mine is a little stronger, but this is still going to be an overall lower team power than you've probably seen from other, from other players. So let's dive right in. You're actually going to go ahead and swap Shuri here in the middle then, just so that way she can shoulder a brunt of the damage being in the middle. And then that's going to be consistent uh, formation to my previous aim teams where I've uh, put Graviton and Security to the right, separated by both Scientist Supreme and my Salter to the left. So from the get-go, you guys, you do see that we are up against Emma Frost, so that's why this node is so difficult to deal with. Uh, just because of the fact that Emma Frost can also help her team in terms of cleansing um, the, the negative debuffs in addition to actually taking away our pauses. But you're also going to see that strife right away from the get-go taunts. So we do have to actually just kind of shoulder the pain right now. And that's why we bring on board Shuri. Shuri's going to consistently keep generating energy for our team with her special to defense up. And additionally, Scientist Supreme is going to keep applying her defense down, offense down, all her negative debuffs against enemies, as you see right here. 
So really, we're just buying our time, waiting for the taunt to kind of uh, disappear and take its toll on the time from Strife. And once that goes, we're gonna go ahead and target Emma Frost. Emma Frost has to be one of the first characters to die in this first initial wave. And as you can see here with this roster as well, unfortunately, because we take out Monstrosity, our DPS is gonna be lower than my, my previous teams that I've used. However, uh, we have a very strong um, supporting cast in terms of being able to have a lot of buffs on our team in addition to healing, which works hand in hand to complete this node successfully. With the taunt down now from Strife, you do see that I'm gonna start now attacking uh, Emma Frost. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but that's quite all right. Um, if you have Graviton stun, I do recommend using his stun um, to, as, as you can see there, you know, his stun didn't work on Emma Frost just because of high resistance, but if anybody has a defense down like the Winter Soldiers, you can definitely use that stun to, to spy you some time to really prevent some damage, but I just wanted to try it out and see if it would work on Emma Frost. Unfortunately, it didn't stick. But that's quite all right. Um, another key reason I love Science Supreme being on the AIM team here, uh, she can also turn the negatives on our team into positive effects. So it really does work out for us. In addition to Shuri, not only being able to provide defense up for our team, but as well as being able to heal as well. So as you just saw right there, Emma Frost took a lot of our pauses away. That's particularly why we gotta kill her first, just because she's too dangerous to keep alive, especially with what she brings to the enemy table. So that being said, um, that does take down Emma Frost here and now we are down to four characters. It's important to keep in mind you guys, the next character we take down here, uh, it is going to spawn the next wave and the next wave is probably where a lot of players will have an issue with just because it's a combination of both Blob and Toad and they do a significant, significant amount of damage. Uh, I would argue that that's probably where it's going to hold back a lot of players from being able to successfully complete this node. So uh, with that being said, that's why we are kind of just slowly allocating damage right now. We're building up our turn meter, building up our, saving our up our energy, getting ready for the next wave. Because I would say once Blob, Blob and Toad spawn, that's where it's going to get really tricky in terms of making sure we have all our abilities ready to go. That's also why I'm not um, activating Scientist Supreme's ultimate. I'm just saving it for once these guys, one of these guys fall from the bleed, um, it's going to prompt our, our agenda and our strategy to be um, in action. So we'll just buy our time a little bit right now. Uh, ideally, if you guys can just leave Sabretooth, he's probably the best out of the four to keep alive just because of the fact that both Winter Soldiers do more DPS. So this spawns the next wave. Um, as you see there, I tried stunning Toad. It didn't work. And that's quite all right. But as you can see from the get-go, Toad just goes ahead and attacks our team already. And that is why exactly we're bringing Shuri on board. Because uh, with Shuri, at least she gives a little bit of a buffer. I'm going to use the Scientist Supreme to apply her ultimate and see if it sticks. Unfortunately, it doesn't stick on Blob. Um, but it does go on Toad, which is good for us because that does reduce his overall damage. It's really a combination of those two. Uh, with you, as you can see there, that's also why I brought both the Winter Soldiers um, uh, consistently damaging them. The Bleeds actually did take them out. So now there's only three characters left, which is very quite manageable for this wave. This is where you want to be in this wave. You want to have just these three alive, ideally, um, because we can control the we can control these three. We can we can uh, ensure that if anybody falls, we can still have Scientist Supreme reviving on her chance. Additionally, we have uh, Shuri's defense up in addition to Scientist Supreme's ultimate upkeep. So that's really going to be the key here, you guys. It's really going to be important to kind of maintain that and ensure that we have that sustained. And as I mentioned before, um, fortunately, our DPS isn't gonna be the best for this team, but that's quite all right. It's so long as we can three-star this node, I am quite fine with that. Uh, we are bringing in a roster here that's, you know, ideally, we just wanna be able to complete this node, but these guys do hit quite hard, especially if you're using a lower team like mine. So first and foremost, um, just because of the fact that Toad is the squishiest out of three, I am planning to take him down. And fortunately, if he, as you can see here, the stun can stick if he has defense down or just by chance, right? So that fortunately worked out for us. We are just going to keep applying some bleeds and taking him down. It is also important to be mindful, you guys. Uh, the next character we kill here, it does also, I believe it does spawn the next wave. So just be very mindful of that. And the next wave, um, it's not as bad as the Blob and Toad combination, but they do have a Pyro and Psylocke. So it's just, uh, it's good to be mindful of that if you guys are planning to do that. If you guys are planning to go on to the next uh, wave instead of just allocating damage accordingly.
So as you guys can see here, I've brought both Sabretooth and Toad quite low now, um, with just given their health bars and whatnot. And this is, an, I'm putting them in a good position that if one were to die and the next wave would spawn, I'd be in a good position to finish off the other. Uh, just because Blob is quite tanky, I'm not really concerned about him. He does, he doesn't also do a lot of damage now, especially if Toad's not with him. So that, that combination does lose effect over time, which is good for us. But obviously if he's taunting, just go ahead and attack him as well if you can. As you can see there, uh, with Toad going down with the bleed, that does leave us now the option of being able to finish off Saber Tooth here, just because he's quite weak as well. That's why we brought all three of them very low health. And now, last but not least, it's just Blob. Um, it just Blob out of that three original that's that's weaker. So you know what? Let's go ahead and finish off Blob here to get him out of our way, and then that way we can actually focus on the remaining three here. So at this point, um, if you guys get through that middle. That middle wave that's really where the difficult part is um, um uh, afterwards uh if we're up against psylocke pyro as well as this aim uh, minion um you should you guys should be in a really good shape to be able to three star this just because of the fact that um their damage is good but we have the excellent defense up in shuri we have scientist supreme applying those debuffs on them and at this point it'll be after taking down blob it'll be a five versus three and and we also have the of heat revives as well thanks to scientist supreme so at this point you can get quite comfortable um just to do to how slow these guys attack i am going to just speed up this video and cut some of the clip out for your reference that way you guys don't have to sit through it all but as you can see here this is the roster that can definitely be able to push you there so i'm just going to quickly um fast forward here in terms of the overall damage out of these three i would be aiming to get pyro first just because he does have the highest damage with them down, I would then focus Psylocke next, followed by the last aim, uh, minion. And there you guys have it. That finishes us off Psylocke. And then last but not least, it's just this last aim minion. Um, it, like I said, the, the damage is gonna be pretty minimal on our end, but that's quite all right, because like I said, this team is really, really focused on sustainability and healing. And that's really what we're getting from this roster. And there you guys have it. That is the roster that we've utilized. Um, as you can see here, just finishing off this last minion, we were able to fully three star as well uh, using, again, I believe the total team power is around 190K. So there you guys have it. Hope this video was able to give you some insight. Like I said, unfortunately, I wish I could have been able to use the full aim roster, but uh, if you guys have Shuri in the mix, this is definitely gonna be huge in terms of being with a three star this. So um, here you guys have it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.